inside the box, I am going to show you how I achieved color shifting on polymer clay. This is a brand new product that I'm introducing to the polymer clay community. I've been testing it since it came out and it has worked beautifully. I haven't had any issues with compatibility to the clay or anything. So I'm really excited to bring this to you today. Um, I'll quickly go over this particular product, depending on the angle and the lighting, you will see a color shift. Sometimes it'll just be a shift of two colors and sometimes you'll see a shift of three. It really all depends on the lighting. So it was kind of hard to film this tutorial because I really had to play with the lighting in my studio to try and get the camera to pick up um, most of what I'm about to show you. So hopefully it will show up well on camera. I'm also gonna post at the end um, what I showed you in the preview and that's when I really got the color shifting to really show up. Um, what I have done here is I have created a little bowl it's just a little dish and I use this product in it. There are three different colors that I used in this and all three of them, I hope you can see, are shifting. This is a pendant or will be once I put a hole in it and I use this by, uh, with a stamp and it's a textured stamp so it's a raised image. And you can see that blue here when I change the angle of it going to purple. And this pink kind of gets a gold hue to it. And I hope that you're seeing this on camera because in person, this is absolutely gorgeous. These beads here, you can see a blue to purple shift and that's more of a teal blue. This is a, they call red to gold. I call violet to gold or pink. And you can see as I turn this bead, the edges are gold, but straight on you see the pink or the violet. This one is more of a green to gold. And it, this one's really harder to capture on camera. And I don't know why, but if you watch the ending, you will see a much better shift in these than I can get right now, having to have my studio totally lit up to create this video. This is a blue to violet. And this is one of my favorites. And this is a pink to goldish. Specifically today, I'm going to show you how I created these two types of beads. And that was by using Teresa from Teeny Pandora or Tiny Pandora, um, her Beads and Blends Kit. These are rolled beads and they will come out for you perfect every single time. A lot of people in the paper crafting community make these rolled beads out of paper, but we're gonna make them out of clay. And then here's a cute flexible spiral and that can be turned into a bead or you could drill a little hole up here and make it a dangle on a, um, a dangle for earrings. That would be really cute. So specifically, we're gonna work on those. Um, I am going to be right back with what you need to create this project. So the first thing that you'll need if you wanna create the beads that I showed you a moment ago is the Beads and Blends Kit from Tiny Pandora. And this is everything that you get. You get a really nice solid blade. This blade is about eight inches long and it's not a flexible blade. It's a really nice solid, very sharp blade. Then 
you get these templates and they are actually clear, um, but for filming purposes, I left the, uh, the tape that's on there and you would just pull it off and then on both sides, it's just to protect the plexiglass that's under here. Um, as you can see from the side, it's clear. I left it on for filming purposes, so it would be easier to see what I'm doing. And you get those in three sizes. Then you also get these three tubes that you can form your beads on if you want your beads to have a thicker hole. And on bigger beads, it's nice to have a bigger hole in the bead, but you can certainly put them on a toothpick or you could use um, knitting needles, whatever, if you wanted a smaller um, dimension for your hole. These will give you, and let me measure this real quick. Um, it's about a, hmm, about nine? No, it couldn't be that much. Um, I would say it's about a five, five to six millimeter hole. And I'm sorry, I should have measured that earlier. So, um, that is what you will need to create the beads I showed you earlier. And then it comes with, um, if you happen to get clay in there, you can put this little cleaner in there and at both ends and clean that out. Um, sometimes people like to use these to put a hole in a pendant, so that's probably just to help push that out. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this off to the side because I want to introduce this new product. And you are going to be wowed and amazed when you see this. This is a new product by Plaid, and it's Folk Art Dragonfly Glaze. This stuff is amazing. <laughs> it is a tri-shifting paint. Um, it's acrylic, so it's clean up with water, and it... Um, is just it's it's absolutely crazy amazing you actually can see the three different shifts that are supposed to go in this but like I said it's all depending on the lighting and the angle but you will definitely see two color shifts I'm gonna go ahead and flip on some lights because um, I lowered things for this video but I want you to see how sparkly these bottles are These bottles are amazingly sparkly. This one is gold, red, violet shift, and it produces these. This one is red, violet, blue, and you will get that shift. This dragonfly glaze is blue, green, gold. This is green, gold, red. And this one here is violet, blue, green. Uh, the bottles are amazing looking. I mean, it's just great packaging. And this last one, I'm not gonna show you a lot of. This is the full spectrum shift. Um, this one, it took a lot of coats, but, and I don't know if you can see it, but there's very faint, um, different, all different colors produced in this. And it, this one's really hard to get on camera. Outside, it looks amazing. It is so full of sparkles. Um, go ahead and get this one. You can put this over different colors, like I did here. I put this over 
the new metallic color that they have. Um, and let me go get that. They came out with two new metallic colors. And this one is the Jade Shimmer. And I've added the full spectrum onto that. And this one is the new turquoise shimmer metallic. And I put the full spectrum over that. But even without the full spectrum, these new metallic paints are beautiful colors. And using them together is just amazing. So that one is the full spectrum. There's a total of six dragonfly glazes. They are, I want to say, I don't know exactly what's in them, but I don't think it's mica. I think it's a man-made mica, um, kind of like the paints, the color shifting paints that they use on um, car paint jobs. You'll see some really fancy cars sometimes going down the road and at one angle it's this color and one angle it's that and you get that try shifting. I'm pretty sure that that's what they use in these except a little larger particle. You'll notice when you apply this that it has a, a larger particle in it. Um, it is, whatever that is, suspended in a clear medium and if you look at these beads, all I've done is painted them. I have not added any resin or any kind of varathane or any kind of finish to them. This is the high gloss shine that you will get with your completed project. Now, I would suggest if you are going to make a bowl that you want to protect it. So you could put a varathane on it. Um, you could also put the Brush On Deep Shine from Tiny Pandora to protect your paint, and that will just make it even shinier. Um, on a pendant, I would probably want to protect it just because wear and tear might eventually uh, chip off your paint, and that goes for the beads as well. So you may want to put like a, a light varathane finish on that or the tiny Pandora brush on deep shine. Um, you can use even um, a UV resin if you want to, a different UV resin. But I recommend for things that are not flexible, the tiny Pandora um, brush on deep shine because it really is quick and easy and pretty much foolproof. So it's it's really easy to use. These are, um, if you wanna see in a future tutorial how I created this flower, just leave me a comment below and I'll show you that, as well as how I made these bicone beads. So if you wanna see that, just let me know and in a future tutorial, I will show that to you. So let me put these aside and I will go ahead and show you the other supplies needed. I used Primo Black Sculpey Polymer Clay. You're gonna need that. You're going to need some brushes and I have a thicker brush for the rolled beads and I have a more detailed brush for the spiral beads. You're gonna use a, need to have a tile, something that you're gonna want to put your um, rolled out beads on. And other than the beads and blend kit, I think that's all we need. So let me go ahead and condition some of this polymer clay, get it rolled out, and I'll show you how I created the beads. Okay, I am back, and I forgot to mention, if you also wanna see how I created this cute little bowl and this um, flower pendant or medallion, just let me know in the comments and I can do a future tutorial on those as well. All right, so what we're gonna to do today, and what I don't have shown as an example, is we are going to make a textured bead also. And if I can remember where I got these since I've had them for so long, um, they're 
basically like filters you would use for a fish tank, I think. Um, but I don't remember where I got these, so I will have to go back and look. But there are three different textures. One is little, this one here is very little, this one's more of a medium, and this one is more organic and larger. And a lot of times I use this on the back of my pendants just to give them, and my earrings to give them a little uh, texture back there so they're not just smooth. So we're going to try creating a textured bead with this, one of our rolled beads. And then I'll show you how to make the spirals also, which are really simple. And maybe we'll do a textured spiral too for the heck of it. So we'll start with the texture beads. And what I've done is I've rolled out some polymer clay. Um, for the larger bead, I rolled it out to a four. A one is the largest, um, is the thickest setting on my pasta machine. And because we're gonna be making a longer bead, I don't want all that bulkness to it. So that's at a four and the shorter, or the, the not so long bead, meaning rolled around so many times, I rolled out to a three. So we're gonna go ahead and apply our texture. And that's just simply pressing this into the clay. And I like to use all three of them, um, just because. <laughs> and really the one at the bottom is the only one that's giving it texture but my fingerprints won't get in there and stuff and ruin the texture that it's making. So there's just a little bit of organic texture. And if you wanna add more, you know, just add as much or as little as you want. And it's best to do it before you cut your bead. All right, so that's good for texture. Now you're gonna to wanna to choose which template you want to use. I mean, you could make a rolled bead that long. And the nice thing about these templates is each time you are going to have a perfectly uniform bead, depending on if you cut them all at the same length. Um, but your ends are gonna be perfect. Yeah, you could sit there and try and cut it on your own, but I'm telling you, this makes your job so much easier. So for the long bead, I think we'll go with this one, with the larger one. And then for the shorter beads, we'll go with the medium. So what you need to do is lay out your template onto your clay. And I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom. Actually, let me cut this straight so it makes my job a little easier. And then we'll take it all the way to the bottom. And you just simply put your template on there. Just apply a little bit of pressure, doesn't need a lot, just so it sticks in place. And then you take your blade and you go to the edge of the template, butt it up to the template and push down and do the same for the other side. Butt it up, push it down. And then if you want to cut there, you can cut there also. Then you just lift your template and pull off your extra clay. And there you go. And we're gonna do the same for this side. And I'm gonna cut a little even on that end because I want to cut, we're gonna go with the middle one. I wanna cut these all at the same length, um, just so they're a little more uniform. So I'm gonna put my template to the end. and cut here, cut here. Oops, I'm a little off there, but that's okay. It's still straight. Then I'm gonna move it down and cut again. And 
and hopefully I'm still on camera. Move it down and move it down a little more and cut again. Now, if you notice, in between, we'll get rid of that one, you have, we'll get rid of this end one too, you have uh, clay that you could use if you want to use those. Uh, they may not be the same exact size as these three, but there's no sense in wasting them. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm only going to use the ones that I cut. So the next step you need to do is carefully get these up off the tile and that's where I like to use my flexible blade if I can figure out where it went. Hmm, I just had it. Oh, right next to me. Ha. And carefully Pull this up off your tile, which I actually left some of it behind, but hey, that's no big deal. That's gonna be the underneath. No one's gonna see that. Then you take one of your rods and you put your clay on the rod as straight as you can. And then you simply turn it and roll it looking at both ends to make sure that they're uniform. And you just keep rolling until you get to the end of it. And that's all there is to it. Now what I like to do is kind of round those little areas there so they're not so blunt and I just push them in a little bit with my fingernail. So there, you have your first bead and this one will be a textured bead. And then you do the same with these little guys here. You pull them off your tile and simply roll them on your rod. And as you're turning, you're just making sure that both ends are uniform. You know, so that you keep that in the middle, if that's how you want it. And then I'm going to just push in a little bit on these ends, just to make them a little less blunt. And it's that simple. Now, what I like to do, I'll put these on off camera, with my non-textured beads. Sometimes you'll get these lines from your pasta machine. And what I like to do is I'll flip that side over and do the same for this one, which is gonna be our long bead. And I'm gonna trim it just a little. I like to take a piece of paper, which I don't have handy, so I gotta grab that real quick. Oh, if Allison could just be prepared, right? And I don't have my roller. Well, that's okay, we'll just do without. What I do is I take a piece of paper to smooth those lines out and just rub even pressure. You could also use a hand roller, which I don't know what I did with mine, I put it away. I'm trying to be really good in the studio and put things away when I'm done with them, but I've kind of reorganized everything. So I kind of, the places that they were before, they're not there now, so. Sorry, I didn't think of that sooner, but you can take your acrylic rod 
and just roll over there that or you can just use it smooth it out with your fingers but I like to use the paper um, because it doesn't leave any fingerprints on there all right so these are going to be just our plain ones with no texture and we're gonna go ahead and start with the largest bead the longest so it'll be the fattest bead and Go ahead and put that down, get the blade, cut there, and go to the other side, butt it up to your template, push down on your blade. Always make sure that the sharp side is down so you don't cut yourself. I've done it and it doesn't feel good. Go ahead and pull your excess, excess clay off. Now, Teresa has a great um, video showing how to use this kit um, with blending clay um, and adding color that way. This way, I'm just doing a surface effect to show you how these paints work. But definitely check out her video. She has got some awesome, awesome tutorials. She is an amazing woman. And she's got so many tips and tools to make your job easier, especially if you're into caning. All right, so I'm gonna take my middle template and do the same thing like we did with the textured ones and just cut out some of those. And I'm just gonna cut two out for this one. I mean, you see how quick and easy this is. There's no fuss or anything. It's just cut and go. So those are the ones that I'm using. That's the excess. Go ahead and pull these up. I'm gonna just trim this one a little bit and pull all of these up off the tile. Go ahead and get one of your rods. Place. Now you could turn those in too before you uh, roll it up. Either, either way works. And just go ahead and roll it right onto your rod. And just keep turning and turning and there you go you know another thing that you can do if you want to add texture <clears throat> to these is if you've got <clears throat> little teeny stamps excuse me <clears throat> this pollen in Florida is driving me nuts <clears throat> it gets in my throat uh coffee I'll wash that down you could use um stamps that have like you know little things on them like little sun or a tribal design or something and you can actually stamp in that to give it texture also if you wanted to so we'll go ahead and put our smaller ones on And I'm gonna have to condition a little more clay because I did not leave myself enough to show you how I did the spirals. And just twist those on there. Get it as even as you can. And I really just love how this is so simple to do. And you get a perfect bead every single time. It's amazing. Push my little ends in there, which I didn't do. Do that one too, just to smooth it out. And I am going to, I don't think I can use, well, yeah, I can use these scraps to show you how I did the, here's a good one, how I did the spirals. 
So what you'll do is you're just gonna cut out, see if I can get this as even as I can, and we'll do one textured and one non-textured. You're just gonna take a strip of clay and you can just eyeball that. Just make sure both sides are as even as you can get them. And do the same with the non-textured. And these can be as thick as you want or as thin as you want. Um, it, you know, that's all dependent on you. I'm gonna cut my ends a little straighter. That one will make kind of a long one. And that one will be a little shorter. And these are really simple to make too. You just go ahead and release them from the tile. Take your rod that you get with the kit and put the clay on and just start spiraling it down the rod. And it's that simple. You wanna leave a little space in between so that your clay does not bake together. And that's a little cracked there, so I'm gonna cut, well, I'm gonna smooth it. Smooth it out. Nah, we're just gonna cut that off because that will hurt the integrity of the bead with that area there. And go ahead and push that down a little bit onto your rod. You can maneuver that a little bit more. And then we're gonna go ahead and take our textured one and do the same thing. Kind of put it at an angle. And just roll, baby, roll. And like I said, you can make these as long or as short as you want. And it's that simple. You'll have yourself a spiral bead. You could, after you've baked and decorated them, go ahead and put a hole in it and these would make really cute dangle earrings. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish off these two textured beads um, and put them on this rod here. Then I'm going to put these in the oven and what I do is I just lay them on the tile. It does not hurt them to lay like that and bake. It doesn't leave any dents or any problems in, uh, to the bead. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these in my oven and I'm going to cure them for 60 minutes, that's one hour, at 275, and I will be back. All right, I am back for the last step of our tutorial, and I forgot to mention, if you have a bead rack from Sculpey, this one here, you could have used this in your oven as well to um, bake the beads if you didn't want to place them flat on a tile. So you would just put them on your bead rack like that. So these are fully cooled and are ready to be painted with the dragonfly gla glaze. What I did want to mention is this product is considered a top coat. So technically you could use a color underneath it, um, either a different color clay or you could have painted your clay, you could have used white clay and um, put alcohol inks on it or acrylic paint or a metallic paint or whatever you wanted to do. Um, I just used the black clay. Um, I did show you examples uh, with the flowers where I had used another color, but I only used that full spectrum on that. I have not done that with the dragonfly glaze um, with these colors. 
Now the bowl that I created, I did use three different colors and the last color I applied over the top of the dragon, uh, the other dragonfly glaze. So you can layer all of these on top of each other also. And I think we'll do that with one of the beads that I'm gonna do. So we've got um, our smooth beads and they are fully cured out of the oven. We have our spiral and we have our textured, the large ones and the smaller ones. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to apply the dragonfly glaze to them. What I did for my beads is I did a total of four coats on each bead. The first coat, you're gonna get light coverage. And as you continue to layer and layer and layer, it's going to become that complete color. Whatever you use, it's gonna be that solid color. So you could put as many layers as you want on. What I like to do is let them dry up to the touch in between layers. Once I'm finished layering, I like to let them dry for a complete 24 hours. You would do that before you would put any kind of a gla uh, any kind of a finish on top of them, any kind of a UV resin or a varathane. And my suggestion is with any paints that you do, if you're gonna use them as beads where they're gonna rub, they're gonna to touch the skin, um, they're gonna hit each other, you're gonna to wanna to put some sort of protectant over any paint so that it doesn't rub off or chip over time. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and start decorating. And I like to have my little thing off to the side so that I can lay them on that to dry. So let's pick this color here. This is the Violet Blue Green Shift. You wanna shake these well. I'm gonna shake it off camera because I know that makes a lot of people dizzy. Don't wanna get you dizzy. And just shake it really good so you get all of um, the pigments or the fake man-made mica. I think that's what it is. Don't quote me on that. I'm just going with that. <laughs> um, you wanna get that all shaken up in the medium that it's in so that you're gonna get an even coat. I like to work out of the cap. So I just take that and put it right there. And if you see, this is very much like the interference paints. Um, where it's white, but when you add it on to the black is where you see the magic, and this stuff is freaking magical. So I'm gonna take my large bead and go ahead and paint that one first. And look at that, see that blue coming out on there? You wanna get as even as you can and it's okay if you get some of this on your metal rod, you can just wash that off. Even when it's dry, you can scrape it off of there. So you just wanna do an even coat all the way around. If a little bit of white shows, that's fine because that is going to dry clear. You're not going to see white. And it's another beautiful day in the neighborhood. In Florida, it's not too hot yet, so I've got the windows open, got the birds chirping. It's just a nice thing to work to. So as you see, it's just putting a thin layer of color on there. And as you coat them, you will see more and more color. And it's okay if you don't get it, you know, perfectly colorized the first, you know, time around. As you continue to add layers, you will see that your whole bead will end up being that color. And it's just that simple. You put on as much or as little as you want. On the bowl, I only did two layers of color. So it left some of the black showing in the background. All right, this looks good. I'm gonna let that one dry. And we'll go on to our next one. 
And I'm just going to dip my brush in some water to get the color off of it. And dry it fairly well with a paper towel. It's okay if your brush is a little wet, but I wouldn't have it too wet. I have not tried the water effect with this paint yet, so you might wanna go ahead and do that. And I have not tried it on uncured polymer clay yet either. All right, so for our textured, I think I wanna go with this one here, and this is the Red Violet Blue Shift. Shake it up good. And work out of the cap. And again, it looks white, but it will go on with color. It shows up on the black clay with color. And I think having some of this texture in here will also um, give a good color effect because this paint likes to be on raised objects or um, curved objects, I should say, where you really looking straight on will see that uh, color shifting effect along the edges of a curved object. And as you see, I'm being pretty generous with the paint. And these little bottles go a long way and they're very inexpensive. Even if you wanted to get the whole set and when you go to Plaid's website, they almost always have coupons. So make sure you look for a coupon before you check out. They sent me three of the bottles and to do for the tutorial and I fell in love with it so much I had to get the other three so that I could show you all of them. And I used a coupon, so it was a really good deal. All right, so that is one of the textured ones. So we're gonna put that off to the side and let it dry. And go ahead and show you how I painted the spiral. So again, you rinse your brush off, dry it off the best that you can. Actually, we're going to use this smaller brush because the spiral is a little more detailed and I'll get less paint on my rod. So for that one, we're gonna go with the red gold violet shift. And again, I'm gonna work out of the cap and just dab my brush in there and paint it on. And it's that easy. Those birds are having fun today full of song. I may have to shut the windows and put the air conditioning on soon though, because it is starting to warm up. But I hate to not hear those little birdies singing singing me beautiful music today. And as you see, it is that simple to just go ahead and paint these. And like I said, you have a little bit of white left on there. Don't worry because that will dry clear and it really doesn't leave a bump or anything. It's everything is very smooth. And you know, get your edges that paint will scrape right off of your 
metal rod. You can put it in water and soak it or, you know, scrub it off with a sponge or something like that. No big deal. All right, so what I'm gonna do, so you don't sit here and watch me paint, I'm gonna go ahead and finish these off that I did not paint, um, add a couple more coats, let it dry, and I'll be back. All right, I am back and the beads are fully painted. Each bead has four coats of paint. And as you can see, the color shift from the sides. That's the violet to the gold, the blue to the violet, and that one is, actually this one's a combination. Um, I layered it. I didn't do that in the previous beads and I wanted to see what it would be. And it's actually the, um, I used the red gold violet shift along with the red violet blue shift on that one. And the red violet blue is on top, but you can also see a difference because this is red, blue, violet. Um, hang on. <laughs> it's good to write the numbers down because it gets confusing. That actually, that top one is violet, blue, green. And this one is violet, blue, green along with the gold, red, violet shift. But you can definitely see the shifting on the edges of the beads. It is so pretty. And on these as well. And you can see the greenish now in this violet. It's later in the day and I've turned the lights down. So it's basically just um, the outside light coming in. And now you can really see the teal along the edges of this green one. You can see the teal, the gold, and the green. And here you see the green and the pink and the gold. This one is pink and gold. And then this is the blue and purple. And then on our spiral beads, this is the blue and purple on the bottom. And what I did up here was I did the violet, um, let's see, number 81 is the red gold violet shift. And then I put the um, violet blue green, I did a line. After I did four coats of the first one, I just ran a line of another color on there. And that's how it gave it that color in the middle. So just be creative and, you know, put dots on them or lines or, you know, however you want to do it. It's really up to you. Um, but these are the beads that were created in the tutorial. And they're very easy to come off of this. You simply, for the spirals, just kind of lift each bottom. And it slides right off. And this one will come right off too. And you just have these gorgeous little spiral beads which would make cute dangle earrings. Just drill a little hole in the top there. Put an earring hook on it and you're good to go. These beads, they come off just as easily. You just take it, make sure that the beads are fully dry, that your paint is fully dry and turn, easier said than done, you turn and just twist it right off of the, right off of there. And they'll all come off that way. Now remember what I said, you're gonna want to wait 24 hours before you put any kind of a finish on this if you choose to finish them off. Um, if you wanna put Varathane on, um, if you want to, uh, use the Deep Shine UV finish from Tiny Pandora. Wait 24 hours so that your paint is fully dry because you put four coats without really waiting the 24 hours in between coats. Um, and to me, I found that it's not necessary. 
but in the end, when you're done coating the beads, you definitely want to make sure that you have waited ample time, at least 24 hours before you do anything else to them. So that's that. I am going to put these aside and I will be back with the giveaway information. Aren't these gorgeous? I'm just like so excited about these new dragonfly glazes. And I hope that you are just as excited for them. Just to recap, everything that I used in this tutorial will be in the description below this video. Now that description, if you're on a PC, it might just show right below the video. If you're on your phone, you might have to tap to the right on a little arrow to open up the description. So make sure you check it because I will have very important information in there along with links to all the products used in this video. As for the Dragonfly glazes, I will give you a link to the plaid site on where you can purchase those. If at the moment of this tutorial, if you sign up for their newsletter, you will get $10 off purchase of $35 or more. Now, if you were to even purchase all six bottles of these paints, it's going to be under $35, which is great news. But to get that $10 off, you need to be at at least $35. So, while you're there, you may want to pick up the new colors in the metallic line, and those are the turquoise shimmer and the jade shimmer. Or, Sorry if you thought that, my phone rang. Um, or you can get the two new color shift paints. And this one is plum flash. And this one is in dra dragon flash. And I do have a tutorial showing you how you can use these with water to achieve a totally different effect that you will get straight out of the bottle. So these don't cost that much either. So in order to get that $10 off, if you add these two or the other two metallics I showed you, you will then be at that point where you can get the $10 off. Also look at their website, see what other coupons they have. They're always offering coupons there to get you a better deal. I will have links to uh, the Tiny Pandora Beads and Blend Kit that you can purchase at thetinypandora.com and the links to the paints and that's it. So if you do want to see how I made the flowers, how I made the bicone beads, and there's big ones and little ones, the medallion, or this bowl, just leave a comment in down below this video and I will certainly do a tutorial on those. So now on to the good stuff, the giveaway. Giveaway for this particular tutorial, I'm sorry, is only open to US residents and I'm very sorry about that, but those were plaid strict rules. And the winner also has to have an actual address. It cannot be a PO box, but I am going to tell you, Plaid has been very generous and they will be, they, you will get directly from Plaid four of the bottles of the Dragonfly Glaze. So you will get four bottles. There will be one winner along with those four bottles. They're offering to include brushes as well. So that's a great prize. I'm excited about that because they have some pretty darn good brushes too. All you have to do to enter is to like, comment, and share this video, video to social media. You can share to Facebook, to Twitter, to Pinterest, to Instagram. It would be great if maybe you would follow Plaid on Facebook or Instagram, and I'll put those links below, but that's completely up to you but definitely share this video. Share, comment, and like this video, and you will automatically be entered. One person two weeks from today 
will be randomly chosen and announced on my Facebook page, and I will have a link to that in the description of this video. So go ahead and make sure you check out the description, check out the links, and you'll know how to enter, and hopefully you'll be a winner. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. I hope that you found it fun. And I just love introducing new products to the polymer clay world. So until next time, bye for now.